And joining me now is Sherry Meyerhofer, the first Canadian ombudsperson for Responsible Enterprise. Good to see you. Thank, Thank you very much, Thanks Peter. for coming in to speak with you. It's nice to have you here. Uh, we heard the Minister Jim Carr say that uh, Canadians will have to wait. You'll have to wait a couple more months to find out exactly what powers this new office will have, uh, but that you'll be part of the process. What is it you'll be asking for? Yeah, um, I, mean, I think the Minister actually said four or five weeks, um, so not... Uh, Maybe oh. not quite that long. Maybe <laughs> not right. too Maybe much. Maybe quite that long. Um, and I think the more tools that the ombudsperson in the office has in order to um, investigate human rights abuses and to to address them um, mm -hmm. uh, overseas, the better. So we, we would be wanting to um, see that um, the powers are as, as expanded as possible. And it's, it's the kind of tools, right? Yeah. I mean, so what do you have in mind? Do you have what we would commonly refer to as those coercive tools, the, the, the powers to force companies to turn over documents, force companies to answer your questions? force companies to participate in investigations. Is that what you expect? Yeah, and I mean, I, I would use the word require. I mean, to be able to require uh, companies to provide us with the information that's required in, or, in order to uh, do a full-sum investigation. An investigation that may also, you know, hopefully, in some cases, help the companies. Mm -hmm. So it's not always, you know, it's not shouldn't be viewed as, as against or anti. But yes, we would want those powers. Just to, so to be clear, because this is, I don't, you, you, there's already some criticism from human rights groups saying if you don't have, if you don't have the necessary powers to, to, to force companies, to compel companies under punishment of some kind, a sanction of some kind, then they don't believe the office will be effective. Can you tell them today that that's what your office will be? It'll be that kind of office? Well, we, you know, the office will work under the mandate that is provided um, through the OIC and based on the advice of the expert that uh, the, the um, government has hired, Minister's Office, that's the powers that we'll have. Um, we are hoping that those will be as extensive and expansive as possible because that's going to be to the benefit of, um, I think, of companies as well as... as um, if they're not, do you still believe there's some value in the position? Um, yes, there is. Um, and I think there's always more opportunities, um, you know, to, to continue on, um, you know, expanding those um, those powers. But yes, I mean, there's there's the power to investigate. And this, this office, different from the um, previous office in the CSR, right. We can look Which at... Which is more of a counselor. Uh, that's right. right. And what this office is it going to be able to do is to launch our own investigations. We don't necessarily have to wait for a complaint. So we have that additional um, ability. And we have, you know, we have at our, our um, disposal other sanctions, um, you know, through um, the trade Right, side. but you would, which is to remove trade services and maybe Export yeah. Development Canada yeah. support and so on. But you would want, as part of this role, I'm assuming, that if you open an investigation into a company, you're not going to want to be told by the company you can't have our documents and we won't answer your questions. You want some legal powers backing you up to be able to force them to cooperate, no? That would be the optimum, absolutely, absolutely. And that's your expectation? That, that's what we'll be we're looking to get, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's be clear on which areas you're looking at. Mm -hmm. uh, as this mandate begins, um, what kinds of companies will, will you be looking at? What, what kinds of potential uh, abuses or conflicts? Right. So the, the office is focused on human rights abuses um, um, war globally mm -hmm. and we're looking at three different industries right now mining industry, oil and gas and um, textile, so garment. And within the first year of the office's mandate we'll be looking at what other sectors um, we would expand into. You've seen some of the complaints uh, I know against Canadian companies, a lot of them in, in, uh, or, or uh, of the complaints, many of them or most of them are involving mining companies, mm -hmm. exploration companies and so on. What do you think Canada's reputation abroad is right now? I think overall Canada's brand in the world is very, very good. Um, now you have some situations that um, impact, negatively impact that brand and that's what this office is going to, is intended to do. It's intended to um, be able to help companies that are working abroad do a better job um, to make sure that they're avoiding um, um, any human rights mm -hmm. abuses, to help them to protect um, the people in the communities that they're they're in at the same time, making the investments and um, that they would like to do business. So, wise. what's the what's the approach you intend to take to those complaints? You've already said that you you don't have to wait for a complaint. Uh, you'll be able to start your own if you want. But um, you know, what's what's the approach you're looking to take with a view to? Uh, you know, what's the objective? What's, yeah. what's the end game for this office when it comes to dealing with Canadian companies that might be in the spotlight for the wrong reasons overseas? Right. So the, I think this office is intended to, you know, make sure that Canada is a leader worldwide and, you know, in the area of, you know, human rights and making sure that we are um, adhering to those worldwide, whether that's individuals or, or companies. And we're going to focus on companies 
and um, you know what what we want to do is to help those companies do the best job they can do so if there's a com if we hear something that's not a, a formal complaint we could be even the company itself could approach the office and say this is a problem we can help to um, negotiate mitigate mediate um, find out you know how to resolve a conflict before it becomes a formal mm -hmm. conflict and do you see you do you see um, your office I mean, how, act, how active do you see the office being on the ground in other countries? And, and is, will that kind of intervention be welcome, or is it all going to be done sort of long distance? No, I mean, I, think, I, I hope that it would be welcome. I think that, you know, in certain cases, you're going to need to go on the ground, and you're going to need to, to see firsthand, you know, what the issues are and talk to the different stakeholders. I think a lot of this is about building bridges between, between groups and people. And sometimes these misunderstandings or things that are going on are because there's a lack of communication or understanding about what the company's obligations are you know, and what the, um, what the concerns and the perspectives of the local citizens are. So, you know, be getting a better picture of that, I think will be very important. So you see that's part of the role as well is, is I mean, I think it'd be surprising to me to think that Canadian companies going in to do business in another country aren't absolutely familiar with all the ground rules and the obligations before they get there, but maybe not. Well, and I think a lot of companies, and more and more so, um, and there's a lot of information already on the Government of Canada website about how to do work and, and how to be corporately responsible. Um, there's lots of information available on international rights standards, and I think um, many of them um, do the best they can do to be up to, to speed on that and are putting them, them in place um, on the ground. But that doesn't stop situations from occurring and from them, you know, maybe getting um, uh, sideswiped or, or blinded and needing some help to, to resolve a conflict. Um, and that's where we could step in to say, we're here, mm -hmm. here's, what, here's what we, after an investigation, what we see has gone off the rails or what's not worked, and you know, here's some, uh, some possible solutions. SNC-Lavalin is in the news these days uh, for its actions in, in Libya, for, for which it's, it's facing, uh, as you know, criminal prosecution. Now, I think you were asked this at the news conference, yes. they said, look, it's, you know, you're gonna be focused largely on, on human rights issues. But a, a, an interesting question, I thought in connection to this did come up. One, one of the allegations around SNC-Lavalin is the paying of bribes and that's just the way business is done in some countries and I think we've heard that from other Canadian companies before. What, what is your response to that when they say, look, sometimes you know we have to break our own ethical standards in another country to be able to do business there. Do you accept that? Uh, no, I don't actually. And I worked in Nepal for 10 years and you know talked to a number of ne Nepal business people who, who said, you know, how do we compete when everyone else is doing it, how do we not? And there's a whole movement afoot, you know, in the inside of these countries to do business differently. And the answer is you don't have to just because everyone else is doing it. You can set a new standard, you can be a leader. And that's what we have to do is encourage, you know, not only our own companies, but other companies in country to, to set up a new system where that's not How um, much influence required. do you think we can have doing that? I mean, if it's... Uh, maybe one day, but in the short term, if Canadian con companies are watching contracts walk away because they won't play by the rules in that yeah. country, is that the price we have to pay? Um, you know, I guess at the, at the end of the day, I guess that is the price you pay because I don't think, you know, you, you shouldn't be doing anything that's mm -hmm. illegal. However, I think that Canada takes something very, very unique to the rest of the world. We have great technology, we have great experts, we have great businesses. I think, I think we have a lot of expertise and commodities that people want. They want um, our business and our investment. And so I think, you know, we need to have confidence in that when we go into a country and say, we want to be here, we want to work with you, we want you to be as good as we are, so we're not going to pay that bribe. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think we'll be, a, you know, more as successful than people. It's the easy way out to pay the bribe. Here's what I can say. To not pay the bribe means it'll take you longer to get what you want. Um, and, and that, you just have to be, be willing to put in the time. All right. And it can happen. Uh, thanks for your time today. Thank you. And Sherry Meyerhofer is uh, Canada's first uh, Canadian ombudsperson for responsible enterprise, the first office of its kind uh, in the world. In the world. Yeah. Yes. Well, and no, it's uh, very exciting. All right. Good luck in the new job. Thank you very much.